Bonjour everyone and welcome to episode 4 of your relegation roundup. Obviously went without one last week due to the international break and this is getting easier by the week to do this, to be honest. You know, those teams, I'll keep that behind us if you can see it, hopefully you can, clear enough. Yeah, it should be loose. Premier League table as it stands on Monday the, what is it? I don't know, I'm stuck in the hotel quarantine. Surprised I even know it's Monday. Bank holiday apparently, wouldn't know. Anyways... As I said, it's getting easier by the week. There's less teams are getting out of it. A big game started off on the relegation roundup this weekend. That was Burnley versus Southampton, head to head fixture. That one for battling for safety. And I mean, if you look like, ugh, that's not very good for me to do that, but deal with it. Burnley on 33 points there in 15th. And they went 2 0 up with Southampton, who are now all the way up, look, miles away. 13th on 36, so Burnley. On 33, whoever was going to get the three points in that game was always going to make life a lot easier for themselves. Because like I say, this is getting easier by the week because it seems to be a straight shootout now between Fulham and Newcastle. Obviously depends on the results this coming weekend really, which we'll look into later. But if Newcastle do win against Burnley, that will obviously put us very closely. And maybe the next week's episode will be a bit tighter. But I just think after this weekend, it looks to be a shootout between... 17th Newcastle and 18th place Fulham. It all lies on Fulham really. Thankfully they, they didn't beat Villa yesterday when they could have and could have dropped Newcastle in the bottom three after we got a draw at home to Spurs. If Fulham do end up winning the game like if they had a win yesterday against Villa then it would have made things a bit tight, a bit more interesting but if Fulham win on Friday night coming and then we beat Burnley on the Sunday then obviously Burnley are right back in the mix of it and Fulham have got a, a big hope of getting out of it but I think next week, next Monday Will be a lot clearer but this is all about the here and now everyone right this is about the present and the present this weekend easter not many given around really i think well newcastle got one off villa to be honest didn't they a nice nice easter treat off villa there but did ourselves a favor as well i thought i thought we played really well against spurs deserved a win i would say i honestly thought with a better side the least deserved was a point which was snatched with five minutes to go after going one nil up julian on scoring against tottenham again he loves it he loves it doesn't he my brazilian but then that, that was still, but it's still a good good point after Newcastle, I think, against Spurs here that's pushing for top four. Could have went fourth if they had have beat Newcastle at St. James's yesterday. So that's a, it's a good point, but the point was made even better by what happened at Villa and Fulham. Mitrovic, obviously, had to be him, didn't it? Put Fulham ahead. They were leading with about um, 10 minutes to go on it. I think that Villa scored on the 78th minute and then Fulham capitulated. Villa ended up winning 3-1 without Jack Grealish as well. Big win for them, that. And a huge defeat for Fulham. And that, we'll see how they react to that next week, I think. But it's always hard to tell because obviously after the Brighton game, it looked like Newcastle were done. You know, everyone thought that. Everyone was like, oh, well, they've surrendered. They've given up. Yesterday was showed fight and passion and determination for the first time in months this season. Pretty much nearly. Do you know what I mean? Like It's been ages since we've seen a, a decent performance like that to give us a bit of hope out of nowhere. But I don't want to get too carried away with that. We've got to do it again next week at, at, at Burnley. Surprised at Fulham. Falling away like that. I think when I seen no Grealish in the team, I thought, oh, nah, they're going to get some again, aren't they? They're going to get some. I fancy Villa to do the job, but Grealish was meant to be back, and when there was no Jack Grealish and Fulham were there, and they looked dead off for it in the way. They were playing some good football, they took the lead, like I said, and then Villa just, the Fulham conceded some poor, stoppy goals, and the Fulham heads went after they got the equaliser, and I think they only got like one team win it then, and then Villa completely ran away with it. Three one winners, that'd be a big blow for Fulham, big blow for Scott Parker, because for the first time, this season, I think, or that I can remember anyway, would have definitely sucked Newcastle in the bottom three. That's definitely the first time we would have been in the relegation zone. But I'm not sure. I think it is the first time Fulham would have got out of the relegation zone. I'm not sure if they have been out of it this season, apart from maybe at the start of the season. But that's when they were really bad at the start of the season, wasn't it? That's why they've had so much catching up to do. Psychologically, that's a big blow for Fulham, that I think, being stuck in that bottom three. Newcastle making it three points now above safety with a game in hand, albeit that game in hand against Liverpool. However, Fulham beat Liverpool, so we actually show some fighting, you know, desire to win, then you never know what could happen. Obviously, Liverpool got Champions League, nothing to focus on. It's given me a bit more belief that Newcastle performance and that full result it has, but I don't know, when you look at the fixtures, for both sides, it's, it's so hard, man, because like I say, one week, a team looks down now, the next week they look a bit better. It's, it's probably going to go down the way, isn't it, to the Fulham game last game of the season. I really hope it doesn't. doesn't. I mean, I can't really handle that one, mentally and physically. I don't think that's going to be a good watch along at all. So I'd rather not, especially with Fulham having fans back as well. Anyways, getting far ahead of ourselves there. The other game that I mentioned was the first one on Sunday, and that was Southampton versus Burnley. And Burnley went to Southampton and were flying. They were playing some decent football again. Like they did at Everton when they got a win the other week. They got um, two goals in front. You know, two goals in front. Southampton pulled it back 2-2 and then went out 3-2 winners. So 
What a win that was from Southampton. I was surprised at how bad Southampton were. Well, let's put that back on. There we go. Because I, I really rated Ralph Hasenhutl. I really rated Hasenhutl. You know, I thought he does look like a really top coach. Obviously, he took Southampton to the top of the Premier League early on in the season. They just completely fell apart, fell to pieces. Raise that eight sentence. Like, I kind of believe it. Obviously, they've had a lot of injuries. But for the, for the drastic four, it's, it's unbelievable. And 2 0 down, I don't want to any. But they pulled it back. To be fair, they have got some decent players. And they said, Chi Adams are. Coming up the row now when Ings is firing, he got a good assist and Ward Prowse, top player, you know, one that you guys have just seen this summer, you know, seen that video, check it out, midfield that to solve Newcastle's problems. But the issue of the character yesterday to come back and the, and the quality really, and overtook Burnley and that was a big game that night because whoever won that one, probably safe now, I mean, I see they're on 36 points now, so happen. So that'll take them uh, 10 points clear of Fulham, you can of see Fulham making up 10 points, can you? so I'd say they're safe now. Burnley on 33, near enough safe, unless, like I say, big, big week. Friday night, Villa Fulham, Sunday, Newcastle Burnley. Everything could change. Because if you think, if Fulham win on Friday night, that would take them above us on goal difference. So Newcastle could be in the bottom three by the time they play on Sunday. Then if Newcastle win, they'd be one point behind Burnley. And back above the relegation zone, drop Fulham back into it. So if Newcastle and Fulham win one or two games and Burnley don't, then it's going to be interesting. There'll be another name in the hat. Because as it stands, it does look like it's a, a fight out between Newcastle and Fulham. This weekend, again, sees a big chance missed for Fulham to get out of the bottom three. They're still stuck in 18th. Newcastle clinging on at 17th, thanks to Aston Villa and thanks to a good performance by the Mags. Brucey making lots of changes and the, the wing-backs working. And then Southampton with a huge win over Burnley to secure their safety. And Burnley on the, on the cusp, uh, I would say. We'll see next Monday whether Burnley are sucked into it. Let's hope Newcastle can go there and get a win on Sunday. And let's hope... Fulham don't get a win on Friday night. That would obviously change things a lot, push Newcastle in the bottom of three. Just about wrap things up there, Nick. You <laughs> kind of forgot about Brighton. Brighton and Wolverhampton just chilling there. 16th place, 32 points. Yeah, Newcastle will beat uh, Burnley next week. They'll go above Brighton. Yeah, might want to talk about Brighton. Then. Looks like there's still a couple of teams left in it. Oh dear, I feel like I'm Ain't easy being cheesy. Brighton, anyways, I only caught the first half last night when they were winning 1 0. Not that last night, I was. Ended up watching the film and said, snoozing off anyways. They ended up getting beat 2-1 at Old Trafford. Danny Welbeck, ex man United player, won the league with them. Opened the scoring at Old Trafford. Won a little bit half time. Got beat 2-1. Not sure how the second half went. Obviously not very good for the Seagulls. But that's uh, the game you wouldn't expect them to win really anyway. Uh, man United just edging it, so they must have gave a good account of themselves. Again, Brighton, you know, Potter does impress me. The close games, like Newcastle, we went there. And what was it, 4-1, 3-1? Bad. You know, Brighton... Leaning half time, beating a full time. And like I said, they're only on 32, so they could be in the relegation zone. Come next Monday, and next Monday's episode's going to be a good one, everyone, because things could be a changing. Because obviously, if Fulham win, then they would send us in there. But to be fair, Brighton are still. Brighton would only go. Brighton wouldn't even go in there, actually, with the new one. I didn't mention Brighton. I just don't, yeah. Even if Newcastle won, they'd be level on points with Brighton. But Brighton's goal difference would be better now, so but I don't, Brighton, Brighton can't get sucked into the relegation zone, can they, next week then? If you look at that, because uh, Fulham as well, Fulham are, are six points off. Brighton, so only one. I didn't really mention them, even though I mentioned Burnley quite a bit. I think it's because Newcastle playing Burnley. But Brighton, they could get stuck right into it. They could fall below. Nah, like I said, they couldn't even fall below Newcastle because of goal difference. So it's actually it could get really tight. I'm not even sure what Brighton have got next. Let's see what Brighton have got next weekend. Brighton's superior goal difference is going to help them. Going to help them next week if they don't manage to win in Newcastle. They will Fulham close that gap a little bit more if they win on Friday night. You know, helped them batter us, didn't it? I could sort them right out there when they beat us 3-0 the other week. Still look at the fixtures. Some games tonight. No one cares about them. Not going to get relegated. Ooh, they don't play it on Monday, Brighton. Bit of a break. Monday night football for Brighton next week there. They're trusting on that, like, because Newcastle could be level, level with them if we manage to be Burnley on Sunday and Fulham will close the gap with a couple of points if they beat Wolves. So, Brighton will be looking at that, though. I hope Everton, Everton very inconsistent. They'll be looking at that game as a winnable game, Brighton, and then they'll think we win that, and then we're right up there, aren't we? We're now mid 30 points, so it'll probably be enough. Like I say, month, next Monday's episode is going to be a lot better. Like, it's going to be, we'll get a better idea of things and it'll sort out because obviously after that, the fixtures get tougher for everyone, I think. So, with Newcastle playing Burnley, the team that they could close the gap on, Fulham, I don't know, Wolves, and Brighton, everyone will be thinking, yeah, we need to stop winning these games because the games are going to get tougher for each side, definitely for Newcastle, and I think so for Fulham as well. That's the relegation roundup for this week. That'll do. I think you can see I've got loads to do. I've actually got a few more videos to do, but that's a discuss. That's what it means. It's getting easier. It's getting quicker this week. You know, pretty much down to two teams. We'll just about keep Burnley in there for now. 
Let's see you next Monday. Let us know your thoughts after this weekend's results, how the table is standing, what will it look like next week. Cheers for watching everyone. Subscribe to my channel TV. Enjoy yourself.